Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So last month I attended GIDS, that is Great International Developer Summit, which was held in Bangalore, right? And I attended many sessions held by multiple leaders, and most of them were related to Java. Now in this video, I'm going to share my learning. We are going to look into top seven concept or top seven questions inside Java, which will be very very helpful for you. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. Very, very simple agenda, right? So, so must know Java concepts, right? So we are going to look into top seven topics that I want to share with you, or you can say top seven questions which are likely to be asked inside an interview. So that is basically a simple agenda, not much over here. So let's get started with first one without wasting any time. So this is basically a simple project where I have created one folder for each question or each concept that we are going to look into. And I will also push this repo to GitHub and add the link in the description. You can go ahead and check that. So let's get started with the first one, right? So let me just open this code real quick and let me try to zoom in so that it's visible, right? Now, what do we have here, right? So we have a class before. That means this is a question after will be kind of answer or the addition to that. But we can make changes over here as well, right? What do we have here? We have an array list. So we are just passing a list over here by using list dot off and it will just create a list of integers for us, right? We have numbers. Now what we are doing over here, we are just printing the numbers, right? After that, what we are going to do, we are going to say numbers dot remove and we will pass one, right? Now what this guy will do, this guy will remove the entry, right? This will just simply remove the entry and what we are going to do, we are going to print it back. So as you can see, I have given the output over here as well. So if you see over here, it will just print this particular list in the first place. And what it will do, it will just remove that. Right? It will remove the element at index one, right? So here my IntelliJ is saying that dude, it is going to remove it from the index, right? That is fine. Next thing, what is going to happen? We are going to print it and you will get that particular output, right? So element at index one, that is basically two will be removed, right? So if I run this particular code, you will find the same output on the console. No problem, right? But now, but now this is fine, right? Let's say you're working on a legacy code, right? You're working on a code and let's say someone from your team, a new joinee decided to change this list to a collection. Now what is collection? Collection is basically parent of list. So if you go to collection hierarchy, so let me go back over here. I should have a collection framework hierarchy over here, right? So this is basically collection framework hierarchy in Java, right? We have seen it multiple times. Now, if you see over here at the top, we have iterable. After that, we have collection interface and collection interface have list, queue and set, right? Basically, collection is a parent of your list, right? So you can just simply convert list to collection. No problem, right? What if someone comes and decides to change it to collection? Now I changed it to collection, right? Now what will happen? What do you think will happen if I rerun this code? Now I will rerun and if you see over here, the output changes. You see over here, first we got 1,3 as output, but now we are getting 2,3 as output, right? Now why that is happening? Now let's say that guy converted this list to collection and they checked in your code, right? And tomorrow your code will start failing inside production. Well, of course, if you don't have any unit test, that's when unit test comes into picture. But tomorrow your code may fail inside production because now your output is changing and your entire logic based on that may change, right? Now the question is why this is happening, right? Now you may be able to see the difference over here. My IntelliJ was saying that, okay, dude, it is an index, but now it is saying it is nothing but an object. That means remove method is trying to remove object one from your list. That means the element object one will be removed, right? And if we look into the list, let me just do, let me just do command Z over here. Yeah. So here it will remove the element at index one, but for collection, it will remove the object, right? So that is a difference. Now what exactly is happening over here? If we go inside a collection, right? If we go inside collection, collection is basically interface, which is extending iterable as we have seen in the diagram, right? Iterable collection. And after that we have list. Now here we should have something called as a remove, right? So let me search it. So if you see over here, we have a method remove, which is accepting a object, right? So this is basically object. So this remove method will remove 
a single instance of the specified element from the collection so that is the difference and now if i go to list let me go to list so what i will do i will go to list now list will extend your sequenced collection and sequenced collection will extend your collection right now if i go back over here and try to search remove again then you will find that we have same method so this is basically a method which is coming from parent right same method as parent but if you see java people decides to add another method let me jump to that and that method is this one which removes the element at index right element at given index so now we have two method and when we do numbers dot remove which one will be called right the one with index will be called right if you use collection the object will be removed if you use list the element at that particular index will be removed now this is a tricky part right this may break your code easily right for example if you have list of string so let me just convert this guy to list of string real quick so what i'll do i'll just now when you use list it will just remove the element at index one so if you run this code what will happen it will just print ac right that is fine now if you are going to convert this guy to a collection and run this code again then you will see that this particular object one is not present inside your list right so in that case it will not be removed but the output is still differing from your expectation right so we cannot say you are completely fine by using some other data structure as well right so it may break your code anyways right again that is when unit test comes into picture if you have your code covered inside unit test at least one of the unit test will fail and you will come to know okay that there is a problem when i'm converting this list to a collection right so that is basically one concept that came to picture and it is very minor case which may happen inside your organization or inside your project and which may lead to failure inside your production so that is basically first case so list and collection remove methods that is something which we have seen in the first one right so let me mark it as completed right now let's get started with the second one and this guy is basically on similar lines so let me just open q2 and i will go to before and i will close all other tabs right so we have this now so now we have similar question right very similar question and here we have this collection now we have collection we have similar list let me zoom it again probably it's not visible so i hope it is visible now if you see over here we have same list again and this time it is a collection and now what we are trying to do we are printing it we are removing it and again same thing will happen right so this time the object will be removed now the question is if we change this particular collection of integer with var keyword inside java now what is var keyword var keyword was introduced in java 10 right it is kind of similar to javascript if you know and var keyword will allow you to define your variables without providing any type so if i say var num equals to 10 then this guy will decide that okay this particular variable is nothing but an integer right so that is something which we can use inside java right you might be aware of it already i'm just highlighting if you in case you are not aware now again if i convert this guy to var small v perhaps yes right again what happened did you see again this guy converted it and it was it started using index right so again your output will vary in this case so that is again a problem because now var keyword will be a array list it will be of type array list right and array list is what array list is a type of list right it implements list interface so that is why it will have again the remove method with index one right so it's again a similar problem that we saw in the first question right so this is also called as type inference right it's very nice to use but uh, we need to use it with caution right because this kind of issues may lead inside your project if you start using this guy or if you start converting your existing code base to this one that will be a big problem right again unit test comes into picture and they will be a savior for you if you have them right good number of unit tests will always save you right? and if you want to learn unit test inside spring boot then i have covered how to write unit test inside spring boot by using junit5 and mockitos in my spring boot playlist so you can go ahead and check i will put the link in description as well right so that is again our second question and it revolves around your var keyword so that is basically our second question right so let's move to third one right and this is going to be fun now this is an interesting one 
so this is basically third one let me close everything else so this is basically a question which i already covered on instagram right so you can go ahead and check that as well you can go ahead and check my instagram account i will put the link in description so what do we have here we have arrays dot as list right you might have used it thousand times inside your application if you're working inside a java project right so if we want to create a new list what we do we said arrays dot as list we create one two three four five six eight whatever we want and that guy will nicely create a list for us we will capture this guy in a list and we will do operations whatever we want to do right easy peasy nothing big but now this is when things will get interesting so i will print it it will just print it fine that is fine right now what i am doing over here i am doing two operations so i have two try catch blocks over here in the first one what i am trying to do i am trying to add an element inside that particular list so we have numbers right so i will just say numbers dot add right and i will add four and if this fails i will just catch an exception and here probably i'll say add unsupported and here i will say set unsupported right because in the second try block what we are trying to do we are trying to update the value of existing one so if you go inside set it will just get the index and the next element which you want to update so at index 2 we are trying to update the value to 2 right so index 2 means this particular element should be updated to 2 so what do you think will be the output in this case and let me tell you that 75 percent of developer that was present inside developer summit could not answer this question correctly now what i will do i will just quickly run this code let's see what happens so there we go if you see over here we are printing this guy one two three after that we are getting add unsupported right but set is working fine right so what what exactly is happening over here so two cases either this guy will be mutable that means we can update or add elements inside this particular list or other thing could be this guy will be immutable where we cannot update or add element inside this guy but what exactly is happening over here this list we are not able to add any element but we are able to update the conclusion over here is when we make use of arrays dot as list you cannot add element inside this particular list but you can modify the elements you cannot add elements in this list but the list is not immutable because you can update the elements right so that is something which is a scary thing about arrays dot as list right and that is why you should avoid making use of arrays dot as list inside your project never use this guy right because such problems will occur if you want to add elements inside the list which you have created by using arrays dot as list that guy will not let you add but you can update the element right so what is the safer approach we want something which is either heads or either tails right either mutable or immutable that is when another approach that is uh, list dot off comes into picture now this list of when you create a list by using list of you cannot do either thing so if i run this now you will see that add unsupported set unsupported that means this guy will create a completely immutable list for you right now you know that okay this guy is immutable we cannot modify it so next time you are going to use arrays dot as list you must know this behavior right if you don't want to take any risk safer option would be to go with list dot off which will just create a immutable list for you but now let's say you want it to be mutable right then you know the easiest option in that case what you can do you can just say new arrow list because arrow list are mutable and enclose this guy inside this particular arrow list and now if you want to change this then you will be easily able to change right and now nothing is crying everything is working just fine so that was our third question so i will just say arrays dot as list and list dot off right so we have seen this one right let me mark it as done right so we have covered question three over here and now what we can do we can cover rest of the questions in another video so i'll create a part two of this particular video and cover these questions there and they are going to be interesting as well because this might be already a 15 minute video right so it will be easy for you to watch it on your own pace so i will create another part of this particular video so if you don't want to miss that subscribe to code snippet right now if you like this video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they are also aware about these concepts inside java that's it for this video see you in the next video